all just hot air because they don't really know. They don't have the answers. They're just stabbing at this, taking wild guesses. But if you really ask them, who are we, where we come from, it normally gets stuck between the argument of evolution. When, when were we started on this earth? Well, you've got to ask yourself a number of questions. You've got to, you've got to ask yourself, where can we look for answers? Where can we look for clues? And hopefully these clues will lead us to a, a point that we can make some educated um, assumptions rather than just you know, going with what we've been taught. Because um, from the research that I've done and many, many others, uh, it is very, very clear that what we've been taught by historians and by religious leaders is not true. Um, and it often comes as a shock to everybody, but uh, you must remember that history is written by the victors. And um, in my recent research of the leading up to the Second World War, um, I've come up with some incredible arguments that actually prove and show that most vividly in, the mo in very recent times as to how we've been deceived about the events of the Second World War. But that's a, that's a debate for another time. But that's just a very good example of how history books are written by the victors. Now imagine if we can be deceived so badly in very recent times how we could have been deceived for thousands of years as a species on this planet. Because... The first of all, you've got to ask yourself, where did mankind suddenly appear from on this planet about 250 or 300,000 years ago? Because Homo sapiens can be traced back genetically through the, the mitochondrial DNA and chromosomal atom. Um, scientists and geneticists have measured and calculated that the first Homo sapien walked the earth around 300,000 years ago, anything between 180 and 350,000 years ago. So the most common figure used is 250,000 years that we suddenly popped up out of nowhere and here we are. And we haven't changed that much. We're not, you know, we're not that dif different from the first Homo sapiens. So what happened? How did, how did that sudden change happen? And um, that, that does two things. It provides a very strong argument for creationists because they say, oh, you see, man was created, suddenly appeared 250,000 years ago. And then they start throwing all the religious stuff at you. But at the same time... Um, gives a, a, a very interesting subject for debate for archaeologists and anthropologists because they say, well, somewhere along the way, we'll find a missing link. And they've been in search of that missing link forever. Well, you know, unfortunately, they're not going to find that missing link because there is no missing link. The step between Homo erectus, which is our most recent predecessor, and Homo sapien is anything between 20 and 50 evolutionary steps. Where are those 20 and 50 different species that would have led up to Homo sapiens? So it becomes very interesting when you start putting the scientific questions together and stringing them along and asking the questions rather than saying, giving the answers. You know, all you have to do is ask the questions and you realize that the answers are not that simple. They become far more interesting and convoluted than you could have ever possibly imagined. And then you suddenly start this wonderful roller coaster ride in, in the research process and you realize that everything we've been taught is a lie. You've got to basically start from scratch. You know, why do we teach the children that the Egyptians built the pyramids when we don't actually know? When we, why don't we rather tell our children, well, we don't know who built the pyramids and leave their minds uncluttered and leave them open. So when they get to the age of 25 or 35 or 45 or 65 and suddenly you throw a curveball at them and say, well, we don't know who built the pyramids. You know, now suddenly you've got to undo 20 or 30, a lifetime of... Uh, why do you say that we don't know? Well, the dating of the pyramids, the, I'm talking about the great, the, the great Pyramids of Giza, the three main pyramids. Yes, the other pyramids, you can clearly see that they were built by other uh, lesser <laughs> beings because they've all caved in, you know. But the main pyramids that are still standing and are still one, some of the most impressive buildings ever built on earth are the three main pyramids, the Great Pyramid and, and its two lesser sisters. Um, but there are many arguments that you can throw at that, and the dating process is aligning it with the stars from various, um, from previous epochs and and so forth. Um, but that's just one one tiny little argument. You